Hello and welcome to a very different looking weekend winners. Still in association with Bet Victor, but you might have noticed we're in a slightly different environment. Global IT meltdown aside though, lads, we have winners to deliver, tips to give. So uh, Sam, we've, uh, we've managed to diversify a little bit. Nothing stops the weekend winners bandwagon. Global IT issues aside, big well done last week, Kate. Couple of nice price winners for yourself. Uh, not so good from me, but like I say, we're looking to try and find a few more this week. Very kind. Thank you so much. Yes, no, hopefully now I'll be able to keep this ball rolling properly. But uh, Deck, yeah, we've got Newbury, of course, loads of different races to go out there and the Irish Oaks as well as the small matter of. We have and we've got croissants. <laughs> Look on Sunday, eat your hard tail. So looking forward to the show finishing so I can get tucked in, to be honest. But yeah, it's a cracking weekend's race. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we will ask Nick his opinions on our selection that we have been presented there by the guys behind the camera who've been working really hard. So thank you to all of you for that. But we will crack on then with the uh, with the action. But before I do so, a reminder as ever to please do gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to pull you in the right direction all the same. Right, we begin at Newbury with the 150, the get best odds guaranteed at Bet Victor Stakes. Listed contest, three year olds and over, over 10 first. Furlongs. Five to go to post here. Deck Guinea's fifth. Ali and Arby. Odds on in this one against his fellow Shadwell charge Al Arzi making his returns. How do you see it? Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame. This race is caught up uh, badly. Um, maybe because Sam sponsored it. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> the prize money wasn't too good. But if there was 13 in at the uh, at the five day stage, and it's quite a small field here. This could be my last show for this. I apologize. <laughs> it, it was nice knowing you. But yeah, it's uh, not only is the race caught up really badly, but there's no pace on it. Looks really mm. messy. Um, it's not really a race I want to have a bet in because I don't know what way it's going to pan out. Lots of these horses are hold up horses. You know, Phantom Flight maybe will go forward. He, I think he does need pace to. Um, to show his best, but so do many in here. I suppose the real question is Alan Abbey going up to 10 furlongs, isn't it? On pedigree, he's, he's definitely worth a crack. And on striding analysis, which you can get on athleraces.com, he's worth a go as well. So I'm just looking forward to seeing how he, he gets on up and trip, because he has been running behind uh, some top class miters this season. So this could maybe uh, open up a few more doors for him. It could do if he's getting that trip, isn't it? But I guess, and that's the biggest question that Alan Abbey's gonna have to get. He's been finishing weekly in his races, over a mile. Does that automatically mean that a horse wants to step up and trip though? What were your opinions? No, and it's muddling. Declan referenced the lack of pace. I suppose in some ways, Deck, wouldn't you say that makes it a little bit easier for him to get the trip potentially? Um, I don't know. I would say no. I think if a good horse is going to stay, um, they'll stay. And I think he probably does want a bit of pace and especially cover because he can be a little bit gassy. I think he can get away with it personally. And I say my doubts come around the fact that you've got a couple in here that are making their first starts of the season. Like uh, Alazi, surely this is going to be much of a case of a, a stepping stone towards later on in the year. Mixed record fresh, so you know potentially could still turn up and do that. But for me, I, I, it's a boring selection. But given the fact that as a three-year-old getting so much weight and the form in the book, I, I felt like the favourite was a fairly good bet. If you can get even money, I think that'd be very fair on the day. That's what I was going to ask: is what price? do you think, or well, what price would you side with him? And do you think there would be any weakness in the market behind him? Uh, you've got to find something to back him against, Kate. And that's yeah. where, you know, for me, I, I went through it and I couldn't find anything against him. So I think if you can get evens or bigger, and I suspect we might push him out a point or two, you never know on the day. I, I'd go even money. I'd, I'd take it personally. Dangle that carrot just enough then for Chris, people like Chris me. Poole currently be beating his screen at home saying <laughs> we will not be going two points bigger. <laughs> <laughs> we will try. Did I say if that even money was there then that would be more and more tempting mm. for me because it is though because you go around the houses with this race you see the price that Ali and Arby is Will he or won't he get the trip? What exactly is his form worth? The fact that he's been keen in his races, he might not be finishing off over the 10 furlongs. Al Arzi, he's just a law into his own. He will come there traveling. He would be, perhaps if you could get there without markets, without Al Arzi, more interesting for me, rather than without Ali and Arby. I think Al Arzi is the key to this race. But do I still want to back him to win? I don't think I would. The other thing as well is, could he pace make? I know William Haggis mm. will absolutely hate that. <laughs> but, you know, I think he is a gelding and Ali Nabi is a still a potential stallion prospect. So I yeah. know what the boys at Coolmore do. Exactly, seven-year-old gelding now that he is Alasi, but it does mean that you say the fan fly might just get that uncontested lead. But trying to find those against the two at the head of the market for the aforementioned reasons, I guess the solid one is just 
has to be Savvy Victory in here, who probably doesn't have the class of the top two, but should either one of them falter two places on off air, I thought that he was probably worth a bit of the each way play and still not chucking away the win part of the bet either then with that, because uh, of course he ran a solid race at Royal Ascot when he finished fourth on the back of the gelding operation in the listed Wolferton stakes behind Isra, then a near caress, a career best from him last time out, second at Sandown in a listed contest in a race he had won the year prior. So he's solid, improved with two starts, and at the prices, I'd just rather side with him. So I'll go Savvy Victory with the each way. Sam? Tentative play on the favourite, hoping the price drifts a little bit. Hoping so, Dad. I've got splinters on my bum. I think I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> you're allowed to. To be fair, you've got a very plush new sofa, so I hope you're not getting any splinters from that anyway with our um, contingency plan that we've managed to put into, uh, into practice in this episode. Right, 3 o'clock then at Newbury. This is the Group 3 Hackwood Stakes. Three year olds and over, over six furlongs. Now, of course, Ascot absentee, elite status. He's back on song for this one. One here last time out. Takes on the King Charles III stakes runner up regional. So, Sam, what's your pick? Yeah, I really like the aforementioned uh, elite status here. And I'm always a bit skeptical of horses when they're coming back from a, from a niggle, a small injury. I think it's fair to say that this would be when I did a bit of Googling. Um, disappointed for connections, they missed that Royal Ascot effort, but I, I thought the reappearance of Newbury suggested this horse definitely had trained on, I thought it was impressive, I think the drier the ground the better as well, which given this lovely hot sun we've got on our backs today on Friday, will certainly continue to help his chances, um, and I, I just felt he looked progressive, and this isn't the strongest division, I think it's fair to say at the moment, and that's why I'm always at the moment tending in the sprints to side with the younger horses, hoping something will kick on. I know they were pleased they missed the July Cup, they felt the ground wouldn't suit and obviously Connections had the favourite for that race, they didn't need to run him on that. The additional week I think will be really helpful to his chances. Carl Burke is a is an absolutely fantastic trainer in my book and I, I just felt this horse ticked a lot of boxes and I preferred him to region what the price is. Are the prices though dictated? But like I say he's had that issue where but if he knocks himself, doesn't he, behind mm. to one of his front joints there. Yeah. So for all that it's nothing major as such, you know, it's not a tendon or anything, it's something that is going to it's keep not ideal. Him, no, it's not ideal. Mm. It's gonna some, be something that's gonna keep uh, just hindering him really and if he does it in a race then that's really gonna have a detrimental effect on him but clearly you're not worried about that no I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, he was a play at the prices for me and I, I could just see him shortening up a little bit and obviously that effort from regional did come over the slightly shorter trip we're back to six here uh, uh, I just felt the weight concession as well that the three-year-olds get is always very helpful yeah the weight deck's gonna be interesting here uh, yeah, but look, it, it's, it's weight for age, um, you know, I, I think we, we bang on about you know, weight for age this time of year, and horses getting uh, weight in different races, but, you know, they're they're getting weight because physically they're at a, yeah, at they, a disadvantage. Yeah, they have it for a reason. Exactly, and yeah. some horses, you know, even mentally are probably at a, at a disadvantage, but um, look, I thought there was you know, maybe four or five potential winners of this race. It's really open, but this race sets up completely different to um, the Bet Victor stakes earlier in the card. That small fields, no pace on. This is a bigger field with loads of pace on. You know, regional go will f go forward. Elite status will go forward as well. And there's another uh, two or three in there who probably just sit off the pace and keep it honest. I thought it could set up for a closer, uh, and I'm going to side with Lake Forest here now. He's another three-year-old in the in the race, uh, trained by William Haggis. I thought he ran a cracker in the Commonwealth Cup behind Anna Sharon. Um, you know, I thought he got a little bit out of his ground early, he had a little bit of ground to make up, and he raced in no man's land quite early in the race as well, but he finished off his race really well. And you know, he's a horse even as a two run, and I thought could get seven. So I think this race is gonna set up well with him with the pace. I would maybe just like Tom Marcon maybe to sit a little bit closer if he can, because it's a sharper track and it's gonna be more of a test of speed. And I know a lot of people who say, well, the form was uh, let down in the July Cup last weekend by Inna Sharon, but I don't think the, new, the July course was ever gonna suit me in a share far more emphasis on speed compared to the stiff uh, six at Ascot so I'm hoping Lake, Lake Forest will go well um, and if he doesn't I'm hoping it's not regional that's the winner because I tipped him up last week for the July Cup and now I've gone against him for some reason. <laughs> yeah and taking him on then this time around but uh, yeah fact, pace wise it's going to be fascinating to see how this race unfolds as well but I mean for me looking at this race I initially saw a regional but at the head of the market thought, right, how can I get him beat given the weight that he's going to have to give away to these younger rivals? But I know for myself and a few people in recent weeks, that slight gloss has been taken off of the three-year-olds of late. You just talked about it there. You know, the likes of Inish Aaron, Van Dijk, just saw 
And those form lines tie in somewhat with elite status as well. So I would like to see him be able to match up to what regional has shown. And, you know, I know of elite status's form being so impressive in the list of Carnarvon stakes last time out over this course and distance. But, I mean, bless them. Relief rally in a day in Devon. <laughs> two wonderful <laughs> fillies. But to have them, uh, those two in second and third, when you try to equate that against Group 1 King Charles the third stakes form, runner-up form doing the best of the Europeans that regional was able to do so I don't think I can quite make them match up in the way you would hope I, I'm, I'm just going to pull you <laughs> up on that a day in Devon what a, lo what a lovely I little love horse goes and, goes and wins at Sandown uh, next time out yeah. second at York like, I, I, I don't know mm. what you expect the form to have done Kate I feel Some like Rod Millman Mafia yeah. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're being a little bit harsh on elite status there Kate I potentially am and I love a day in Devon she's done me a fair few turns as well and the fact that she's trained on so so well this year like she's sort of defying everything that even the millmans thought of her so um when I mean, she's not in here so i'm not going to go too in too much depth about her own form but i just think it needs to be proven now up to the higher level still like i say it's solid for the listed I agree. <laughs> it's solid I agree. for the listed level of the carnarvon states but when you're talking about group one at royal Ascot in comparison that is a whole other stratosphere but elite state is going to take another step forward here kate this is where this is where you're not seeing the future you've got to be an optimist i'm a half full kind of guy not half empty. i'm a proven solid form kind of girl and that is regional then for me so no doubt you're fully in on elite status yep there you go. Right, Deck? Yeah, I'm all about Lake Forest and uh, Team Mr. Haggis and Maricon, yeah. There we go, then, and hope that the pace sets up nicely for you. Mm. Three different selections, and hopefully that's helped you solve it in some sort <laughs> of way. But really looking forward to the race all the same. Let us know in the comment section below who you fancy. Now, before we move on to our next race, a reminder uh, to like and subscribe to the At The Races YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Of course, we still have so many more episodes to bring you, and hopefully we'll be back in the studio again next week as well. As as we move on to the 335, the Super Sprint Stakes for the two rods over five furlongs. Always a competitive heat. Deck, where do we even start with these speedy two-year-olds? Uh, well, I, I always like to start every race with, with pace and um, just to get an idea of kind of what emphasis of stamina it's going to put on these horses and maybe where you like horses to be ridden. But uh, I thought all the pace was down the middle here. I thought potentially negatively being drawn on either wing could be a potential negative but look we'll have to see how the track is riding and he's racing at Newbury uh, today mm -hmm. Friday so you you know you get a, a couple of clues that uh, we're not privy to sadly doing the show but we'll see how it pans out I'm hoping um, Venegard, uh, Vingegaard drawn in four I'm hoping that's not going to be a negative for Holly Doyle and uh, Archie Watson because he's the horse I like he's probably a bit light and experienced to uh, compared to a few in here he's only had the two runs but he's quite a professional horse and you know I thought he ran really well in the in the Windsor Castle to finish fifth in the end you know he went from basically a heavy ground tactical run race on debut at Chepstow to a fast ground uh, listed race uh, that was well run at Royal Ascot and I thought he acquitted himself very well especially given he was kind of drawn on the wrong side of the track now the form hasn't probably worked out well there but I think after two starts as a well-bred son of Memas that he's entitled to improvement and look he's quite professional I just hope Holly Doyle rides him with, with plenty of confidence Holly's maybe not riding with uh, her full confidence like she usually does usually in my opinion but like, ride this fella like a good horse and I hope he will do the job and not concerned about the draw there but he has been well supported though since the time of declarations as well so like you say good. plenty of people are agreeing good. then with you even before you have the chance <laughs> to make the case as well but he is going to have to defy that low draw Sam that has proven significant and in terms of the trends and in recent renewals 2011 I think when I was having a look you've got to go oh, back stole my for, line for, for a later. single <laughs> digit draw um, yep. but deck off air was assuring me that there's been a few placed there's horses been, there's from... been plenty of placed horses mm -hmm. over the years especially recently enough that have been drawn in low figures so i quite liked cardi in here i thought it was a really curious runner um for my money when you look through previous winners of this race you tend to want horses that have got plenty of experience i think there's a few exceptions to that richard hannan had a horse in 2018 that won it off the back of minimal runs and for all i respect deck selection I am still worried about the draw. Um, I'm I'm in 14 with this horse, so I'm quite actually happy. If you think it's going to be down the middle, you want to be deck. But historically, higher placed horses in terms of draw have done better um, in terms of win percentage. This horse really interesting runner, loads of experience. Couple of runs in France recently. I actually put it in my tracker when it won at Windsor, going back a little bit now. And I thought that was an impressive effort. Play your tracker. 
Yeah, my ATR tracker, very good deck. Yeah, yeah. See, some of us plug each other's, you know, things <laughs> and aren't diminishing of the, the sponsors. <laughs> um, but like I say, I just think she's a really interesting runner here. Obviously, she's got a good rating as well. And the way the race, I think this is a great sort of concept as well. We mm. need more of this kind of thing in racing because it's a really intriguing puzzle to solve and adds a different dimension. Plenty of places on offer. And I thought at the time of recording, we had a double figure price. I think that's already shortening up. So for me, I thought Carl Burke's filly was really interesting. Yeah, and I'm totally totally agreeing with you yes, as well mate. then yeah if you like to say that each way price is slowly going mm. before our eyes but I mean it's going to be a positive the fact that uh, Cardi is being so well backed here and it's interesting with this race because normally we kind of have the standout every year that sets apart and tends to run well if not win then if not that then uh, Richard uh, junior before mm. see well yeah. after senior would tend to win this race as well so that's kind of your starting point is either the informed horse that's the standout or a Hannon runner. But I've gone against that then, but it is the experience that Cardi has then to her name as well. And also the draw factor as well, because you've said it there, stealing my line in the process of 2011. <laughs> you have to go back to, to find a horse that won from a single figure draw. Even since then, only one horse has won from a draw lower than 13. That being in 2013, when still 10 won. So high draws, sorry deck, do seem to be the way forward, at least for the win. Like you say, those place efforts, are then as well but still 14 though hopefully for cardi plenty of experience five starts winning once that was like you say her second outing at windsor before going over to france which always for two year olds a nice bit of added well bonus experience as well second in deauville um and uh, and then third on heavy ground enlisted company at Sean T as well. But the list of company that she faced last time out, no match for Apollo Fountain, but Apollo Fountain is well-bred, well-connected, could still be anything at this stage. So I don't think it was much disgrace bumping into that and one. And Kate, we're going to get better ground, which I think will definitely yes. be up her street. It was good to firm when she won at Windsor. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to worry about the drying ground, which is another positive. And nor do you. No, exactly. Not, and neither do I, either of us then, Dex. So we're with Cardi. Either do I. I'm with uh, Vingegaard, please. <laughs> okay, you can have that one then. So slightly disagreeing in some sort of parts there between the three of us for the super sprint. But let us know in the comments section below who you fancy for the race as we switch over to the Cara for the Irish Oaks. The Group 1 Irish Oaks comes up at 3.40 at the Curra on Saturday, of course, for the three-year-olds over a mile four. Now, Ryan Moore has opted for content over the Royal Ascot winner Port Fairy, Sam. Were you surprised by that? Uh, a little bit, I think it's mm. fair to say, but you'd be more surprised that I'm not opting for a Coolmore horse here, no, I'd say. No, that Kate. is the biggest surprise I, of all. That is a big surprise because uh, I'm one of the biggest fanboys. But <laughs> I, I thought War Chimes was a fascinating runner for David Minissier. Um, Listen, the Curra looks like it's going to get a fair bit of rain in the yeah. morning of the race. Obviously, how much hits, you're never quite sure. But third in the Oaks, and I thought that was an absolutely cracking run. Uh, the trip definitely was sort of the, the suiting of that horse. And you go back to last year, beat a very good horse who uh, won a Group 1 last weekend in France from Illinois. And I just felt David Nisset's horse 8-1, to one, Shamie Heffernan booked to ride as well, uh, who's an excellent gun for hire these days. You know, he knows what it takes to win these kind of big races up against strong opposition. Uh, I, I just felt eight to one was probably a bit of a, an each way stab in a race that I thought was actually quite open this year's renewal. I think it's really open this year, which is why kind of, I guess with official ratings deck, you're not probably taking them as gospel as you perhaps might do in other ways, because I thought maybe that's why Ryan went with content then because she is rated, I think about three pound higher officially than Port Ferry. But this is wide open. We haven't got seemingly one standout superstar this year. So, I mean, it's opened up for a great race. Yeah, never mind your BHA ratings. You want Rixie's ratings. And Rixie's <laughs> ratings has got the, the two O'Brien fillies, both of them on a 105. Uh, I am surprised Ryan has chosen content because... Mm -hmm. One, she's going up and tripped. This can be the first time she's run over 12 furlongs. And two, she can be quite keen mm. and quite gassy. Um, like if Ryan gets her home now and gets her to switch off and she wins, I think it's going to be a cracking ride. Um, if I was Ryan, and it's been a long time since I did around, uh, since I was eight stone, 11 or whatever it was, but I would have gone for Port Fairy. I just think she's rock solid. She's going to stay. Now, look, we, when we sent through our selections on Thursday, there wasn't as much rain forecast. So this is a bit of a nightmare because she's very good on good ground. Um, I just hope they don't get loads and loads of rain, but I thought the visor really sharpened her up in the Ribblesdale. Yeah. You know, at Chester when she was second there in the Oaks trial, she just she still looked green and I thought when she hit the front she waited and she was just waiting for another horse and kind of got mugged late. But the visor sharpened her up. Um, 
and I just hope Wayne Lorden's really positive on her from the gates because he's drawn wide and that's not ideal. You know, this derby, the, the 12 furlong derby track at the Curra, you do not want to be wide yeah. uh, because it's constantly on the turn there. But in fairness to Port Ferry, even though she was a little bit slow away uh, in the Ribblesdale, she showed brilliant early pace. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping it's going to be a, a Ribblesdale that works out exactly the same where the Rafe Beckett filly goes out in front, uh, maybe Port Ferry sits second and she just outstays everything. So yeah, um, I'm going for a Bally Doyle horse, but not the Ryan Moore one. No, I'm so annoyed about uh, Ryan, really. I mean, he <laughs> initially, when the decks came out then and he was jocked up on content, it completely swung the market. It's kind of levelled itself off somewhat mm. now because Port Ferry was heading the way before decks. And then, of course, with Ryan opting for content, it, it went the other way. Now it's sort of levelled off a bit. And obviously, if all that rain does come, that puts mm. obviously extra emphasis on stamina for content. Yeah, exactly. Extra stamina questions then that she's going to have to answer. The stamina questions do not have to be answered by Port Ferry. I'm with her as well because I think that at Royal Ascot she really showed stamina was the biggest aptitude uh, her biggest attribute of all and so she herself will be able to turn this into that stamina test and potentially test content on that as well like I say the weather is slightly playing havoc again with another part of the preview but yeah the visor though last time out just seemed to her to another effect she's got these massive big genuine ears hasn't she she's no control over them <laughs> whatsoever but she's a really likable filly improving all the time I hope that Ryan's chosen wrong as well. And I thought the ride that Ryan gave her at Royal Ascot was really interesting. Yeah. It was like he wanted a lead. He mm -hmm. he let Lava Stream head him and he didn't go for Port Ferry until very, very late. And then when he got stuck into her late, uh, I thought she was a very, very snug winner. And, you know, she sat a lot closer to that really strong gallop mm -hmm. that was set. So uh, although I think Lava Stream got within, what was it, the neck in the end, I thought Port Ferry was valued for far more. There you go. Bit of agreement then between Deck and I, Port Ferry. Sam, just to reiterate. Yeah, war chimes for me. Bring on the rain. <laughs> oh, goodness me. OK, we'll have to wait on Weather Watch then to see exactly how amount, well, what amount of rainfall transpires. But do let us know in the comments section below who you fancy for the Irish Oaks. Up next, our best bets of the weekend. Now, the all-important part, our best bets of the weekend. And just as a reminder that our naps will be boosted again on the dedicated website on Bet Victor. So, Deck, which nap are we boosting of yours? Yes, uh, the nap is going to be Vingegaard in the Super Sprint for Archie Watson and Holly Doyle, um, son of Memis, who has been in good order this year. Uh, really professional for us at two starts. Hoping it was a case of him being drawn on the wrong side in the Windsor Castle. And if so, I think he can go close. Uh, the next best we've all also discussed and that is going to be Forest Lake in the Hackwood got there eventually yeah. um, loads of pace on here for him um, I loved his run in the Commonwealth Cup just looked like a horse who's come back in in good order and he was a quite a significant gamble that day as well so that suggests to me that he's been in good order and then the long shot is going to be Hannah Leah in the Irish Oaks I think this is a really smart filly she is brutally overpriced on ability uh, it's worth going back what she did in the um, in the Oaks trial at Nace last time out she gave the field a colossal head start and still managed to pick them up but the rain is a worry. It's a first time going up to 14 furlongs and it's just going to put more emphasis on stamina. But if, it, if loads of it doesn't come, uh, I think she's a very smart filly who's well-bred. Nicely done as well. Sam, your own best bets, please. Yeah, uh, as we said earlier in the show, Kate, I'm a bit of a half-full kind of guy. So I think elite status will take a step forward, confirm that the form that the horse already has is good, but we'll take another step forward and get the better of regional and co in what looks a competitive race. But uh, with the boost there, I think that's a really fair price we're getting about elite status. My next best is going to be believing George Bowie absolutely flying at the moment, 25% strike rate. Um, I always take notice, it seems to have been like the reverse, hasn't it, of UK trainers sending horses to Ireland this year and getting mm -hmm. big race wins. And I, I think believing with Ryan Moore booked to ride certainly can do that. I probably wouldn't want to see too much rain. That's the only thing. It's the opposite of my other Curra selection that we've had in the show but uh, I thought the four for Ascot last time out was was fair and I just feel like there's a bit more to come from this horse I think George Bowie as I said absolutely flying so Ryan Moore booked that ticked plenty of boxes and then finally Kate it's a big weekend of jumping isn't it it is we've yeah. got market raisin and uh, I thought Piscar Pike for Bet Victor Ambassador Jamie Snowden and Gavin Sheen takes a ride could be <laughs> brutally overpriced at a double figure price uh, really curious to see how that horse gets on had a reappearance under his belt which I think was needed and the mark looks very competitively handicapped uh, definitely think that horse will go well in each way price nicely done with a mention of summer jumping as well we try and get it in there where we possibly can 
but yeah, it's going to be a huge day though at Market Rays and a big day, of course, and as well with the summer hurdle and the summer plate on the card. But my own Napa comes in a race that we haven't discussed. This is the 225 at Newbury, the extended two mile handicap. And this is Kyle of Lockouch. Now, this race has been won by some top notch stayers on the flat in recent renewals. I don't think we've quite got that sort of class of horse this time around, but Kyle of Lockouch, he massively caught the eye though when we last saw him in the Ascot Stakes Heritage Handicap at Royal Ascot over two mile four. That was that bizarre race where they were all strung out, yet no one was really able to come from off of the pace to challenge uh, the eventual winner. But Kyle of Lockouch, he was ridden further back, finished third in the end. Now the handicapper must have been impressed somewhat because he still penalised him with a two pound rise for that well enough beaten third place. So hopefully the handicap has got it right and that's a positive view of that race and uh, Kyle of Lockhouse can make amends for that. Now Cardi in the super sprint is gonna be my next best. That price is contracting all the time as we were saying, Sam, but hopefully with the experience to the fore, with the nice draw to boot, that Cardi is able to put all of that to a good use in the super sprint. And my long shot also comes over the sticks. This is in the summer plate handicap chase, of course, over the extended two mile five. 315 up at Market Raisin, and that is risk in the ground. Now, we saw the winner of this race last year came into it with a string of wins to uh, to her name. Risk in the ground brought up a hat trick last time out, bidding for a four-timer here, and really wants a true test of stamina. He's likely to get that in this race because tends to go to horses who are held up. He is one of those because they really get on with things on the front end of a pace, teared up nicely. Hopefully, risk in the ground can outrun his price. But that's everything from us on this slightly mm. unique weekend winner show. So a big thank you to all the team and, of course, to the lads and for all of their hard work and adaptability mm. as well to get the show on the road. A big thank you to you at home for watching. Remember, you can catch all of Newbury's races live on Sky Sports Racing. And we'll be back at the same time next week to preview the King George at Ascot.